this week on Ask the Expert, we have with us Mel Cook, and she's from Henshaws, and she's the Community Services Manager for Children and Young People. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today, Mel. And what we'll do is the usual sort of format. If you can just, and I've kind of introduced you, but if you could just tell us a little bit more about what you do, um, and then we can go from there. Yeah, so I'm Mel and I am the Children and Young People's Manager for Henshaws and I manage the Manchester and Greater Manchester and Merseyside areas of our Young People Service users. Excellent. And I know obviously people will know Henshaws for being based in Manchester, but you yeah. just mentioned they're like Merseyside. Um, and I guess we'll get into it with the projects, but from our conversations we've had before, I think you also cover sort of a wider area as well. Yeah, so obviously our head office is in, in Manchester and we um, cover the surrounding Greater Manchester areas. And then we've got another office in um, St Vincent School for the Blind in Liverpool, and that allows us to cover the Merseyside areas. But we also have a reach to anyone in the northwest. Um, so we have people from Halifax, North Yorkshire, Leeds come into our sessions. And then we go further afield virtually. Um, but face to face, it's usually the northwest remit that, that we support. That's good. And I'll probably just mention this now because we both might end up saying CYP, which for everybody yeah. that's watching is, is basic children and, and young people. Yeah. Um, I know obviously there's quite a few projects that you're involved with. Um, yeah. Could you just tell us, yeah, give, give us some examples of the projects that you're working on and sort of what you hope the children are going to get from it? Yeah, so our biggest project is the I Can Do It project which is basically a course for the children or young people to attend to improve or cement their independence skills um, so practical skills such as fastening the shoelaces brushing their teeth making their own drinks um, food but also emotional skills so being able to talk about their eye condition building friendships recognizing other people's emotions because obviously they can't see facial expressions etc um, so yeah we do that we assess the children in their home so we get to meet the families and we, we ask the parents where they think the child's needs are, but then most importantly, we ask the child what they think their needs are because they can be very different. And then they come to an introduction day where they meet other people that's going to be on the course. And then we go in a residential for four days um, away from the families so that there's no barriers to them picking up the skills. And we promote then for them obviously to use, actively use, and then demonstrate to the families on the last day the skills that they've learned and encourage them to keep in touch with the people they've learned on the on the course, people that they've met there. So, um, yeah, that's the I can do it. And then we also have Live Life Go Further, which is our kind of weekend and holiday activities. So this is predominantly... Um, a bit older young people who we try to engage in activities that they might not necessarily engage with otherwise you know they think that they can't do it or um, the families might find it hard to do so for example um, we do skiing kayaking uh, you know and cycling but we encourage the whole family to do it and then we also do virtual sessions for just the young people so that they can form like a youth group virtually where they can form um their own friendships and choose their own topics and things and that group is really successful and has become a writing group so okay. they've, they've all wrote plays um and that's where we've had some quite well known people uh, in the industry come in and demonstrate their writing skills. So Jack Ryder, who um, played Jamie in EastEnders, who's now um, a producer in theatre and obviously just released his own children's book. He's come on and um, let them read the plays to him. And then he gave them hints and tips around writing. And we also had Conrad Jones, who is a number one best-selling Amazon author he came on and they did like a question and answers session and they did a little bit of a play on on the um, zoom so 
so yeah that's really good um and then we do the um can do will do so that's allowing the kids again to come on activities where they can do things that again they probably think that they couldn't do but on this one it's predominantly we try to encourage the families and the siblings to spend all time together doing these inclusive activities um because it's always a, a barrier sometimes to get to the places cost can be a barrier for these activities yeah especially if there's a few siblings, but we think it's really important that they are allowed to engage in the activities all together, but with the support of us from a visual impairment um, side of things. And then we have an Oldham project where we've got um, an enablement officer that works just in the Oldham area, and she's using that as a pilot to go into schools and teach or educate people about eye health and visual um, awareness. So this is to non-visual, non-VI children, so mm -hmm. that they can be more inclusive to children, young people, or even adults with a visual impairment, rather than it being the other way around. You know, I think we focus on the visual impaired child being included, whereas if we can educate everyone, then it will naturally happen. So yeah, Claire's doing that in Oldham. And we've also got a drumming group at the moment. So that's been a little project with, he's quite a well-known Indian drummer in his industry. He told we take that. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Mendy's great. And he has, he was taught by a blind person. So he has taught the children how to do this Indian drumming and they use chopsticks and glasses, cups, tins, and they're doing a concert in the Trafford Centre on the 20th of December. So they're going to perform there. So yeah, that's our, our A lot going on. Well, no, yeah. I think it's good because that, like you, you touched on, I think there's a few things uh, sort of unpacked there. The, the fact that obviously you're dealing with children and, and young people. So I guess a lot of it happens presumably sort of in holiday time and, and yeah. sort of week things. Yeah. Um, and, and also obviously there's, there's a, a, yeah, a seriousness to it because it gives them the independence back. But it sounds like also you're yeah, kind of having fun with them and, and engaging yeah. with them and so on, which I think is, yeah, a really good thing. And, and the fact that you mentioned there about um, sort of educating sort of the, the wider population, not just focusing on um, the, the children, as it were, as, as yeah. being sort of the, the odd ones out, if you like, because uh, we talked before this about, um, there was a, a documentary last night on autism and there was a big yeah. sort of focus on that, that really it should be like the main, sort of the, the wider public that have got the issue that should really educate themselves as opposed yeah. to seeing that as a, yeah, a barrier or making judgments. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, everything's kind of going in the right direction uh, with that sort of stuff because um yeah certainly when I grew up there was nobody educating me about visual impairment and I think that's the thing if you don't have that education especially at a young age yeah um yeah naturally yeah you're probably going to either think or say things that, that you shouldn't um and I think it's yeah no I think what you're doing there is fantastic and age-wise you go from yeah what sort of ages are you talking about uh, so we go from birth so we have we have this a stay and play like a mums and tots mm -hmm. um, so we, we go from birth and we go all the way up to 18 but then we still offer services to young people up until the 25 from 18 to 25 if they've got additional needs yeah so yeah we've got quite a broad range of that's why we're children and young people <laughs> <laughs> our 18 plus don't like being classed as children so no and why should they know yeah no because they're not are they so but yeah it is really rewarding and i agree we we really do need to focus on educating other people because Adults especially have come to us and said they're actually frightened of communicating with people with a visual impairment. Um, and it's good that they can admit that because then we can provide the support, you know, and it is a confidence thing because you're scared of offending somebody, you're scared of doing or saying the wrong thing. So yeah, we work hard to try and make sure enough people can can 
integrate with with everyone else. Brilliant. And obviously, most people will recognise Henshaws for being involved mainly with um, vision impairment, but yeah. obviously, quite often there's uh, sort of other additional uh, sort of needs and disabilities. How does yeah? yeah how does the program work with regards to that? So obviously, we've got our college in Harrogate and obviously the Henshaws College are more complex disabilities whereas Henshaws Charity is more um, BI focused however we do have so many children and young people that have a secondary need or you know they have other conditions that we have to cater for so I build really close relationships with other charities and we kind of have a buddy system, so we bring them on our VIAP training, the visual um, impairment awareness training, and then they will do the same with us. So we'll be allowed to go on their internal training, and it gives us kind of an overview of how we can support the other needs. Um, yep. And we work closely with the parents and the professionals, so anybody that's involved with that child, we have a really good relationship with to make sure we know what what that child needs and what we can do to support the other needs other than just the visual impairment yeah okay okay so well, how about i mean obviously we i think you mentioned about things like you know time shoelace and things but yeah there's probably one of the things that sort of dawned on me certainly after watching that documentary last night is that there are certain things that probably we do every day and we don't even think about um yeah. have you got examples of sort of yeah where the course has helped with just yeah yeah just sort of, yeah yeah, so just after when the lockdown eased, we had our first face-to-face -face session and um, a child attended who's, who's known to us, he attended a lot of things, but obviously had lost a lot of confidence during the pandemic. So didn't want to stay, was was getting quite distressed, but mum, you know, said he'll be fine. Um, and I said, we'll give her a call if he doesn't settle. So she exited and we sat him down sat with his head down, wouldn't engage at first, started coming around a little bit, engaged then. And by the end of the day, he could open his own crisp packet, which to us is like probably the easiest task. Yeah. But for him, he was eight years old and he'd never done it before. And wow. he was so proud of himself. Uh, he couldn't wait to tell his mom. He kept telling me how proud of him she was going to be. And then after that, her, his mum emailed me to say that he'd even um because we'd done other skills on the course that he'd started making his siblings his younger siblings breakfast he was making them toast so he was uh, saying oh my mum can sit and have a coffee while I do the breakfast so yeah it's the little things that make such a huge difference yeah. to their independence yeah and I guess a big part of it I mean you touched on it with the sort of youth group but a big part of it I would imagine also is the sort of social aspect so even yeah. uh, sort of virtually I guess yeah they build relationships and yeah. so on with people and their peers. yeah which is great because they probably on the virtual sessions we probably get more of a mix of young people that probably wouldn't necessarily come into contact in the face-to-face -face. Mm -hmm. so it's been really good because they've formed those friendships in the virtual sessions when we do host a face-to-face -face, they're more likely to attend to meet meet the other people that yeah. we've met virtually um but yeah it's it is important and i think one of one of the other skills that's probably pretty really important that we focus on is looking thinking like the child would think and trying to get the child to think differently so mm -hmm. obviously you would you would expect or as society we expect a blind person to have a white cane the younger children really struggle with that where yeah. like you know a more mature person will use whatever they need to use to to get the result what they what they want to do but i the same boy it was actually who said i, I don't want to use my cane will you guide me and i said no you, you can use your cane you know you've got to be independent but everyone will look at me i said why why don't you like it everyone will look at me and and they'll say things so you know you turn it into humor is the best way to engage with them and i said well they'll look at you more if you walk in into that wall <laughs> and he, you know he's laughing then and he was like oh yeah, yeah no you're right so grabs his cane and off he goes then so you know it's looking it's looking at it from a child's point of view and trying to make it fun and make them see there's a reason to them not just because they can't see 
but it's allowing them to be independent. Yeah, no, I think that's good. And also, I suppose the other thing is, um, especially when you're younger, you want to just be like everybody else. So yeah. using like iPads and iPhones. And of course now, yeah, they're making that easier and easier. So there's no reason why they can't. Um, yeah, exactly. They can just use any technology as long as the people around them are educated to teach them how to use it, um, you know, and, and that they've got the right technology for what they want to use it for. But yeah, they, they just want the same gadgets as the friends. Yeah, no, that's great. So one of the things I probably should ask before we end is if somebody wanted to get sort of involved, either that it was a friend, relative or neighbour, um, yeah. how and they're in that sort of northwest region, how would they get in touch and get involved? So the easiest way is to go on our website. I mean, the, the main numbers on, on the website, but there is a children and young people section and any of our social media, so Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, it's it's all there. You can just contact us by email, phone, whichever is the easiest and somebody will get, get straight back to them. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, I think we need to do a follow up sort of in a few months yeah. time and see how it's all going. So I think similar to me, you're relatively new to the... Yeah. Uh, the, the organization so it'd be interesting to yeah. see how it all pans out um, yeah. But, yeah yeah fingers crossed it's on on the up with our new referrals <laughs> good stuff excellent well thank you very very much for your time i really appreciate it and um yeah we'll make sure that we link to all the bits and pieces in the video yeah. um and we will catch up with you soon all right thank you take care Bye bye, bye.